This is the house of bread. The house of bread. This is the house of bread. Oh, yeah. Where we're building leaders, changing the world. Welcome to guiding light us and me. Oh, yeah. God has a word for you. A word for yes, you. there is a word for you. Because that's not your reality. Your reality is the word of God. Because you am a child of God. You were not made by your circumstances. You were not created by the things you're going through. What has created is the word of God. Everything will come and go. Heaven and earth will pass away. But there is something that shall abide forever. That is the word of God. I declare to you the word of God in your life shall bring about his purposes, shall manifest his glory, and shall cause you to shout, Hallelujah! Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. I'm reading from the message transliteration. Laughter and bread go together. And wine gives sparkle to life. But it's money that makes the world go around. I want to speak to you this morning about controlling the spirit of money. Beloved, we are spiritual people. Am I correct? And as such, we need to understand the spirituality of money. The reason is simple. That we may exercise our God-given spiritual authority over money appropriately. Let us start by saying to you that all things are yours. Help me tell you what. All things are yours. All things. All things. How many things? So we urgently, beloved, need to understand what has already been given to us by God. Number one, the earth is ours. The earth is what? In Psalms 115, verse 16, the Bible declares that the heaven, not even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth has he given to the children of men. Number two, if the earth is ours, logically it follows that all things on earth are ours. Does that make sense? Number one, God has given to us the earth. Now, number two, if the earth belongs to us, then everything upon the earth belongs to us. Does that make sense to you? Little wonder that Apostle Paul can boldly declare in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 21 to 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 21 to 22, saying, Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. How many things? Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What belongs to you, I command it to find you. What belongs to you, I order your steps to locate it. Let the wandering spirits and the distractions the enemy has set up against your life come to an end in the name of Jesus. Number three. God has given to us authority. So we have authority. Someone say authority. In giving us the earth, God never left us powerless, beloved. Rather, he also gave us the authority to replenish, to dominate, and subdue all things on earth. Now I'm not just talking. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, we 
see this. And God bless them. Who are them? Who are them? Who are them? Come on, are you here this morning? And God bless you. And he says to you, be fruitful. And multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the earth. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Everything that has been resisting your authority. I prophesy over you. Let its resistance be brought to an abrupt end right now. In the name of Jesus. Everything upon the face of the earth. That has sought to rebel against your authority. I beat it back into position for you. In the name of Jesus. What has been given to us by God is ours. And over what is ours, we have the right both of possession and of control. That is why everything we possess and control is subject to us or answers to us. It is therefore our prerogative, beloved, what we do with what we have. Now, whereas to question that prerogative is a confrontation from which ladies and gentlemen, we must never shy away to accede our God-given authority so the things that are rebelling against us is an act of crass irresponsibility. Something we must resist with everything in us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? With our God-given authority, will it therefore be out of place to say that whatever is on the earth must stay subject to our authority in fact, it is irresponsible of us not to so insist. Are you still with me here? Yeah. We are therefore responsible. Someone say responsible. We are therefore responsible to ensure that money as one of the forces in the world which we own stays subject to our authority. Given both the pervasive and the invasive nature of money, though exercising authority over it is our natural desire, in practical terms, that does not naturally happen. It takes knowledge and understanding of money to make it to answer to you. This is what accounts for why we have financial poverty. Poverty, sadly, even amongst us, the spiritual people. I think these days, the way things are, it's even more amongst us. We need that knowledge and understanding to make money answer to us. This month, I decree over you the end of the activities of the spirit of poverty over your life. I command your heart open to receive knowledge and understanding and to step into your position to control money in the name of Jesus. Money, beloved, is a spirit. We all know doubt without a doubt. Now, to fail to see money as such is one of the 
incapacitating blinders. We suffer as Christians in our bid to bring it under our control. As a spirit, like every other spirit, money follows certain spiritual principles for it to come under the control of anyone. Now please listen to me. What I'm about to say is important. <laughs> listen carefully. Whether those spiritual principles are operated by believers or unbelievers, or whether they were activated in the positive supernatural or in the negative supernatural, it's not important to money. Whether you are a believer or whether you are not a believer, the principles of money, whether you activate them in the positive supernatural or in the negative supernatural, as far as money is concerned, Once the principle hits it, it comes alive. Are you with me? Are you with me? That's why an unbeliever is the richest man, not only in this country, in Africa. He's an unbeliever. He just knows how to function and cause those principles to work. And the degree to which you are able to function or activate those principles for your benefit is the degree to which you will have it. Because the last time I checked the Bible, Jesus said to Paul, you will have always with you. But I did not see your name there written. So, you should not write your name in the poverty column. When he said the poor we will always have in our midst, he knew that some of us will never listen. Some of us will never learn. He knew. Hey, he knows all things. So don't write your name in the column of poverty of life. Money simply responds to those who operate its principles. This morning, beloved, I will merely mention these principles in passing. Six principles in all. Hello. Six. How many principles? Number one. Money must be earned. Number two. Money must be tithed. Money must be tithed. Money must be what? Number three. Money must be invested. Money must be what? Number four. Money must be saved. Money must be saved. Number five. Money must be given away. And number six. Money must be enjoyed. Some of us we fail, fall flat here. We don't know how to enjoy what God has given to us. Six principles in all. Now, there is, however, a good news that we must bring to our notice as we round this up. We have a clear advantage over all others. As children of God, as far as bringing the spirit called money under control is concerned. Our advantage, beloved, is that our God and Father your God and Heavenly Father is known as the father of all spirits. Is someone with me here? He is the father of what? And that includes the spirit of money. Now, if he is the father of all spirits, including the 
spread of money. That puts you in a vantage position because you are his child. Is someone with me here? It gives you an advantage. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 9, what's more, it is, we had human parents who disciplined us as we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? When our fathers in the natural, our parents in the natural disciplines us, we respect them. Particularly, you, you know, as young people, we respect them. We, we are upset with them. We, we get angry because we felt we should not be disturbed. Why are these old people, they don't understand? How many of us know what I'm talking about? Hello, parents, are you here? You know, your parents never understand until you became a parent. Then you know that they were actually people of understanding. <laughs> it's always like that. It's always like that. Now, please listen to me. Scripture says, Our Father is the Father of all spirits. Should we not submit to Him and live? That's what ticked me off. Now, the process of discipline takes two dimensions. And you know our God is awesome. He's not a taskmaster. He, he has made it so easy for us. Number one. You must submit to him. In love. You must submit to him what? What? It's a love relationship. You know, you know, when you love someone, truly, you don't want to hurt them purposely. Am I correct? You desire their best interests at all times. Am I correct? You know, I was thinking about it. And I was thinking about it in the con in context of a, a daughter and her father. You know, you know when, 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 when a daughter truly loves her father, she craves his approval all the time. And when the father gives her, uh, uh, her his approval all the time, listen, she draws her happiness from the approval that comes from the father. That girl will never go wayward. No man can convince her to go. Because you know, everything a man can offer to her, she has already found it where in her father. When our happiness is dependent upon the approval of our father, nothing should matter to us. But you know something? We are looking for happiness everywhere else. That's why we can't really love God. I mean, I've been in church. I mean, I've told you my story, but I was born in church. I'm a church rat. I was born in church. And, and I've heard it so many, many times from Christians all over. I love the Lord. And how can you love the Lord? And you're breaking his heart every moment. What type of love is that? I don't understand. You're doing the thing that he says to you, don't do. And you're doing them actively, knowing that he said I should not do this. And you're doing it. And you say, how many, how many sisters, listen to this. When your husband does something to you and says, sorry. Tomorrow he does the same thing and he says, sorry. Next tomorrow he does, I, what occurs to you? You know that this man is, that, you don't want to hear that sorry again. Is that not so? Beloved, that is how it is. You know, our repentance is no longer repentance. It is only regret. Eh? It is only one regret. Because repentance means this is how I was going. And I saw I'm, I'm making a mistake. So I turned around. I begin to go this way. You cannot continue to go this way. I say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's what we are doing. We don't love God. Beloved. God wants us to love him. Love will shape us away from sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Examine your heart. Exam Do you truly love this God? My body is his temple. This thing, I am, I am, this is not me, it's my house. He lives in there with me. I have no respect for him. I bring all kinds of rubbish and I dump in it. And I say, I love him. Think about it. Everything that comes out of my mouth is garbage. Where he is. And I say, I love him. Think about it. It's not false. He's not holding a cane to beat us down. No. He's saying, just love me. Just love me. So when your relationship with God is love driven. Hello. You command his trust. God loves us all equally. He doesn't trust us all equally. When it comes to dispensing his resources, he considers those that he trusts far above everyone else. Command God's trust by loving him. Why should God give you money? Hello? When he knows you, that if money reach your hand, he no go see you again. Why? He cannot trust you. Those who he can trust are those that if he commands them, that money in that account, empty it for this person. They will go and carry it. Bam. Number two. Number two. Be assignment focused. Let me tell you about be assignment focused. That is the discipline. God has placed you here upon the face of the earth for an assignment. When you are focused on that assignment, he cannot but give you the resources that you require. He cannot abandon you. You are doing his work here. You see, but you see, God hates waste. He will never put his resources on you to waste them on what he has not asked you to do. Because whatever we do outside of what God has assigned us to do to him, it is waste and he will not fund it. That's the reason why poverty is profound in the church. Because there are many of us sitting here who are doing what God has not sent us to do. So we are struggling. Ah, but pastor, listen to me. Scripture says, the rain falls both on the just and the unjust. So, just as he feeds or is feeding the unjust, he's feeding you. You are at that level. That should not be your level because you have an advantage. You have an advantage. You can go higher. You can. Money can follow you when you are on assignment for God. Praise the Lord. I adjure you by the mercies of God, therefore. Take advantage of your relationship with God. You are a child of God. He hasn't sent you here to suffer. He hasn't sent you here to be frustrated. Allow him to discipline you, to shape you. And some of us, as I close, I, I, let me say that. I, we are at that point of being disciplined. He knows us that we are speeders. And the speed at which we go, will wreck us so he causes delays to come into our lives to balance us out so even though we have an assignment he doesn't want us to go at that pace so he slows us down it's not frustration it's a lack of understanding that makes us think think where I, I, I was there i was there for a long time thinking god is frustrating me lord i've left all is that what peter said to follow you what am i getting he says relax relax when i take the rough edges out of your life and you know the, some of the rough edges are in my life where my concern for what people will say I, I, I'm too, I'm too sensitive to what people would say. So no, don't do that. No, okay, do it like this. No, 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 no. He is cutting them down. So every day I'm becoming me, as I should be. No worrying about what people will say. Just get on with the walk. I'm the only one that 
you must look into for your happiness, for your satisfaction. Everyone else does not matter. Just, just once you, I agree with you and I give you the nod of approval, it shall be okay no matter who is opposing you. So he's working in us. If you are an assignment and you are not going at the pace you desire to go, know that God is working on you. Ah, Pastor, what are you talking about? How long? I don't know how long because he knows what he has to do in you to effectively equip you. Are you with me here? Are you with me here? Is someone getting blessed? So when we submit to him, hello, for discipline in the love relationship with him and being assignment focused, God will cause money to come under our control. That is the advantage we have. Whatever money we need to do what he has sent us here to do. I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus